What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be adding an external GPU to the all new Menace Forum HX90. When it comes to this mini PC, it is the most powerful mini PC that I've ever tested on my channel with a mobile Ryzen APU and for good measure because it actually has the Ryzen 9 5900HX. We're going to be adding an RTX 3060 to this unit, but there is no PCIe slot on this mini PC. We have to do this over M.2, so I'm going to be using one of my favorite accessories for these mini PCs. The ADT Link R43SG, and basically what this is, is an M.2 to PCIe X16 adapter, and we can add an external GPU to basically any PC or laptop that supports an M.2 slot. I'm going to be going with this Tough Gaming RTX 3060. We have 12 gigs of VRAM, and uh, as you can see, it slots right in the top of this thing. The whole adapter itself does come with two 6-pin power connectors, so I only need one for this 3060. And to send power to the GPU, this dock actually supports a couple different ways. You can use an ATX power supply and just set it on the desk, or you can opt for one of these all-in-one power supplies from Dell. It's the Dell DA2. These are a dime a dozen on eBay. It puts out 220 watts, and this dock was designed with one of these in mind. For the RTX 3060, we'll have plenty of wattage here, but if for some odd reason you're going to add like a 3080 Ti to this, 220 watts just isn't going to be enough. But for most of the cards on the market, we should be good to go. So I'm going to be connecting this 3060 to the mini PC over M.2. That's what this whole dock is about. With the HX90, luckily we do have an M.2 slot very easily accessible here. But that's what my operating system's on, so what I had to do was remove this and run a 2.5 inch SSD with my operating system in games. I just installed a 480 gigabyte PNY, so I can remove this M.2 SSD and plug the eGPU right into that M.2 slot. So it is a bit funky how we're going to get this in here, but uh, just need to move this whole dock around real quick. We'll slot it right into that free slot now. I'll go ahead and secure it with this screw. And once that and once that's in and once that's in place, we now have our GPU connected to the mini PC. Now, uh, setting this up on your desk can be a little tricky. Uh, there's several ways you could go about it. I always just try to make sure I don't have too much pressure on these ribbon cables or the M.2 drive. And to tell you the truth, the way I have it set up right now, I think it actually looks pretty good. We just have that mini PC with the included stand and the GPU sitting right beside it. HDMI from the RTX 3060 going to my monitor, and we have power coming into that dock from the Dell power supply. I just tried to clean up the wiring in the back a little bit, and really all that's left to do is boot it up. Now I do want to mention that this definitely makes no sense. If you want a gaming PC with a dedicated GPU, your best bet is to build one or just buy a pre-built. But uh, you know, I love these mini PCs, and I really love to see how far I can push them. So let's go ahead and boot this up. We should get some spinny fans on that RTX 3060, and hopefully, and hopefully I get a signal from that GPU. Now, along with this, you'll have to install the correct drivers and everything like that. But as long as I get a signal on my monitor, I should be good to go. I just need to go ahead and install the correct GeForce drivers for this setup. So after a little bit of time, I got everything up and running. I did a quick reboot after I installed those GeForce drivers, and I should be able to log right in here to Windows. But so far, it's actually been functioning quite well. But so far, it's actually been functioning quite well, and right now what we have is that Ryzen 9 mobile APU paired up with an RTX 3060, a desktop variant running over M.2. So I want to get into a little bit of testing here. I'm just going to start up something simple. I'll go with Ultra Settings. I need to get Afterburner set up, but I think we'll just go with Overwatch at first. Then I'm going to plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. And here it is. This is actually working way better than I thought it would. We have Overwatch, Ultra Settings, 1080p, and we're over 144 hertz. So if I did want to lock this on this monitor to 144, I should be good to go. I haven't noticed any stutters or anything like that. Temps look pretty decent up there in the top left-hand corner. I do have Afterburner running. But when it comes down to it, Overwatch is a very well-optimized game. It's been on the market for a while. So let's go ahead and connect this to my game capture just so we can get a cleaner look at everything. I'll run a couple benchmarks and then we'll test out some more games. Alright, so before we get into the benchmarks and some more gaming, I just wanted to give you a look. We have that 5900HX, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, and the RTX 
3060. And remember, this is only running over M.2, we're not running over PCIe. So the first thing I wanted to do here was run a couple benchmarks, and I started out with Geekbench 5. I know this is only measuring the performance of the CPU, but I kind of wanted to see if taking the load off of this CPU or this APU by removing the built-in Radeon 8 graphics would help out at all, you know, give us a little extra wattage over here on the CPU side, and unfortunately we just have the same exact score. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. First up, Night Raid with a total score of 50,109. And just to give you a frame of reference, without the RTX 3060, we scored a 15,192. With Fire Strike, we got a total score of 20,665. And without the RTX 3060, we got a 3,490. And finally, Time Spy with a 9,204. And without the RTX added, our score was 1,338. So obviously, we got a significant boost in GPU performance, and I knew we would by adding a dedicated GPU, but now it's time to get into some real-world gaming and see how this thing performs. First up, Dirt 5, 1080p, very high settings. We're getting an average of 103 FPS. When it comes to the 5900HX, I mean, it basically has enough power to play anything. It really comes down to those built-in graphics on this mini PC. But with this M.2 RTX 3060 added, I don't think we're going to have much trouble playing basically anything at 1080p, high, ultra, and even nightmare settings. Speaking of nightmare settings, here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, nightmare, we got an average of 131 FPS. Here's The Witcher 3, 1080p, ultra settings, and when it comes to the post-processing settings, go, it's go. set to high there. There's no ultra settings, so we're basically maxed out here at 1080p, and I got an average of 73 FPS. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, and my preset is RTX Medium. It's really trying to stick there at 60. You see it go up and down a little bit, but overall it just can't hang a constant 60 with that RTX on. But as soon as I turn DLSS to balance, we got an average of 66 out of this one. Going into GTA 5, I really didn't think we'd have any issues. We definitely have enough CPU power, and this RTX 3060 is good for 1080p, very high settings, and an average of 105 FPS. Now, Call of Duty down. Warzone, 1080p, high settings, 103 FPS. Fully playable here, looking really good, and uh, you know, if you wanted to get 144 out of a little mini PC like this, you could drop some of those settings down. Target down! Well done. The upper right part of your HUD shows how many enemies remain. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I don't think that it's worth going out and buying a mini PC like this and then adding a dock and a GPU. Just build you a gaming PC. But, uh, you know, I love these mini PCs and I really like to see what they can do. With this one having that Ryzen 9 5900HX, it has been the most powerful mini PC that I've ever tested, at least with a Ryzen mobile CPU. And now with this RTX 3060 added to it, I mean, it's a full-fledged gaming machine. You saw the kind of performance we were getting at 1080p. Some of this stuff can be done at 1440 with a setup like this. But I do have to say it again, I would not recommend going out and buying this specific PC, the dock, and a higher-end GPU to get this all running. Just take that money and build a decent gaming machine. But you know, if uh, this is something you're into, I will leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out my review of this PC without an external GPU added, link for that is in the description. And uh, if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up. And like always, thanks for watching.